Hey, Ken. Hello. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> Hi, Ken. Hi. Hello. 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 Hear you. Hello. Hello again. I think we should have changed location, so it was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put up some nice art. Yeah, All right, let's get to it. The gallery view. Here I am. No. Okay. It's eight o'clock, so we might as well get started. Ken, do we have everyone? Uh, let me check. Oh, Steve, no Ed. I don't see. We have Gordon, Rob, okay, and Marie, Ed, Lisa, Linda. Pete, is Pete here? I don't see Peter. I don't see Peter. And he's not in the waiting room. Maureen? Maureen, sir. Very good. Oh, there's Peter waiting. Here we go. Made him. All right. Okay. Casey's last name. Let's get started with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I lost my sound. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, those of you joining us. As a reminder, uh, if you're not a member of the board, please mute your uh, microphone uh, as we come to you. Uh, Board members, uh, please open your mic. That would be why we want to mute the microphone so we don't have uh, the background noise. I'd like to take a few minutes uh, on behalf of myself and the other board members, Pete and Ed, and thank the community for our re-election. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to serve uh, on the board again for this next term. And I do appreciate the voting that occurred. This was new for us. And I think the community showed how well they can do. I'd like to take a moment to thank Mrs. Pitka, who uh, chose to put her name out there and volunteer for a volunteer position on the board. Uh, yes, this is volunteer. Uh, and we chose to do this again. I thank her for having a willingness to participate in their community. We also have the superintendent's report this evening, and then we'll move on to 15 minutes of questions uh, that you can send in, in writing through the chat uh, feature of Zoom. Steve Kepper will uh, receive them and uh, raise them as questions. We don't use people's names so that we don't give favoritism to any one person. Uh, if you have multiple questions, you're welcome to put them together. Uh, we may only read one of them depending on the number of questions. And at the end, as always, there's a general opportunity to ask questions, uh, to bring things forward. Uh, let's move on to the superintendent's report. Gordon, if you wouldn't mind. Yes, thank you, Bob. First, I also like to express my gratitude to the community for a very large voter turnout in passing our budget. This enables us to improve our online instruction, maintain our excellent academic programs, add initiatives in the area of STEM, 
and maintain lower class sizes. So thank you. I also wish to thank the community for approving our capital projects. These much needed repairs must be done on our three buildings and they must be done as soon as possible. I would also like to congratulate Bob Sweeney, Pete Van Middleham, and Ed Law for being reelected to the board. Your dedication and support this year were vital in facing the unprecedented challenges we encountered throughout the school year. We all, everyone on the board, works as a team and as in, with partners in making some very important and impacting decisions. We work collegially, respectfully, and in harmony, not in opposition. I look forward to working with all of you again in this coming school year as we face challenges of reopening or not reopening our schools. Thank you, gentlemen, and everybody on the board for your continued support, dedication, and wisdom. A last note, two of our uh, Mount Sinai directors are retiring this year. Uh, they will be missed. First, Larry Roberts. Larry's been the director of music and applied arts for four years. During that time, he took an already successful music program and expanded it, showcased it, and gave it new life. Larry's been a pleasure to deal with since day one. He's very popular in the district and be missed. Larry has been a true colleague and a friend. I will miss him. Frank LaBianca. Frank came to Mount Sinai in 2001 and was hired as a social studies teacher. Next year, he became the director of humanities. His duties were eventually expanded to include the role of assistant principal. For almost 20 years, Frank has been dedicated to the families and students of Mount Sinai. Frank absolutely knows all of his students under his supervision and is always there for them. Although Frank did an excellent job as assistant principal and as the director of humanities, element, on both elementary and secondary levels, by the way, he was an outstanding social studies teacher in Rocky Point and Miller Place prior to coming here. My daughter was fortunate to be one of his students in Miller Place. How ironic is that? We meet here. Frank will be missed by faculty and administrators, but more, more so by our students and their families. Thanks, Frank, for 19 years of service, dedication, and loyalty to Mount Sinai. Thanks, that's my message. Thank you, Gordon. Uh, both added so much to our program and they will be sorely missed and we wish them well in their endeavors. Uh, just a uh, procedural matter that uh, Scott Ray asked me to address. He's received a number of calls with regards to this. The school property is closed. The fields and track and tennis courts are closed. Uh, they are not open. Uh, we're not a public park. Uh, so we will not have any of the property open through uh, until phase four of the governor's phases. Uh, it is anticipated that they may not be open then because of construction, currently the access roads, this is conduit work going on, uh, and this is the time to do the construction work. So I don't anticipate that fields, uh, the track or tennis courts will necessarily be open. Let's move on to the approval of the minutes. Steve, would you mind taking care of that? Sure thing. Dissolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby accepts the minutes of the May 18th, 2020 regular meeting and the June, 20, June 2nd, 2020 public budget hearing as submitted. May I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Ed. Any comments? All in favor, indicate aye. 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 Any questions on the agenda? Steve? Uh, questions we've received so far, one about graduation, one about grading, one about uh, bus company. Nothing on the agenda, so those will be held till later. Okay, just a quick comment on the graduation. Tomorrow there is a uh, follow-up meeting with the administrators and students to discuss uh, final plans with regards to graduation. Um, I always tell the board members, uh, first of all, it's not a matter that the board makes decisions on and we are guests and are honored guests uh, at our students' uh, graduation. So uh, we will not have any uh, comments tonight on the graduation uh, from the board. 
having no questions on the agenda, we'll move on to personnel. Uh, Anne Marie, could you start us off? Yeah, personnel, tenure appointments. Tenure appointment, Kelly Doran. Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby grants tenure as follows. For Kelly Doran, tenure area, ELA. Date of tenure, August 31st, 2020. Certification status, professional. May I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Ed. Any comments? Uh, Kelly is uh, a fellow Stony Brook grad and has been associated with the district either as a leave replacement or uh, appointed teacher for more than four years. And uh, I, for one, uh, look forward to her being a tenured faculty member. Any other comments? All those in favor indicate aye. 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 Uh, Madam Clark, could you please denote my absent absentation, please? Number two, Lisa, would you do number two? Sure. Tenure appointment, Gianna Pompanillo, resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby grants tenure as follows to Gianna Pompanillo, <laughs> Family and Consumer Science, uh, date of tenure, August 31st, 2020, and the certificate issue status is professional. I'll second. Thank you, Rob. Any comments? I'll add one. Uh, not only is Gianna involved in our home and economics, uh, she's an accomplished and trained pastry chef. Uh, she did teach in Suffolk County faculty. Um, she also has a business background and brings that into her class uh, in terms of what it's like to have uh, business entrepreneurship in terms of either restaurant operations, food truck operations, and she created an entire process for her students. Uh, I look forward to her uh, joining the tenured faculty. Any other comments? All in favor, please indicate by aye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> and what I think would be three is Stacy Bugden. Uh, Pete? Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education, I hereby grants tenure as follows. Stacy Bugden, tenure area of special education, date of tenure August 31st, 2020. Certificate cert Certification status is professional. May I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Ed. Ed thinks tonight he gets paid for all his seconds. Uh, <laughs> I'm on the clock, Bob. He's on the clock. He, he's, he's, Someone's he's got, got a bill. Paid. Someone's, Someone's got, got a bill. Any other comments? Stacy is one of our um, special education teachers. She's actually a trained uh, and has her BA in mathematics and her uh, teaching certificate in mathematics, which has uh, been instrumental in her success in our special education department. And I look forward to her joining our tenured faculty. Any other comments? All those in favor indicate aye. 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 <coughs> Rob, would you take number one on resignations? Resignations. Resignation of Mitchell Woolman. Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby accepts the resignation for retirement purposes of Mitchell Woolman, technology teacher, effective June 20th, 2020. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Lisa. Marie beat me. I think Anne Marie. Anne Marie, thank you. Any comments? Just quick. <laughs> All in favor, indicate aye. 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 <clears throat> uh, number two, resignation, Susan Vassallo. Uh, Ed, would you take that, please? Resignation, Susan Vassallo, resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent. The Board of Education hereby accepts the resignation for retirement purposes of Susan Vassallo. School District Aid, effective June 26, 2020. May I have a second, please? Second. Thank you, Steve. Ed couldn't do his own. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. 
Any comments? All in favor indicate aye. 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 Thank you very much. <clears throat> Appointment C. Pete. Appointment C. Recall of the excess elementary teacher resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby recalls excess elementary teacher, <coughs> Laura Tricorius, oh. to her full time position effective September 1st, 2020. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ron. Ms. Tricorius uh, has been a teacher in our district. Uh, she was on leave. She returned. Uh, in the middle school, she's uh, certified as a reading teacher, uh, trained with uh, Teachers College Reading Program. Uh, I think the middle school is going to be disappointed to lose her to the elementary school, but I know they work closely. We look forward to having her back. Any other comments? All in favor indicate aye. 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 Vote carry. Number two. Uh, and Marie's ELA leave replacement teacher. Okay, ELA leave replacement teacher, Joseph Arico, resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby approves the following leave replacement appointment for Joseph Arico. Appointment date, September 1st, 2020. Expiration of appointment, June 25th, 2021. In the area of ELA, compensation, step C, MA, certification status, initial. I have a second. I'll second. I'll second that. I heard Lisa first. Okay, that's fine. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, any comments? All in favor indicate by aye. 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 Thank you. Lisa, would you mind taking robotics? Sure. Robotics STEM advisor, Lucas uh, Kircher. Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby approves Lucas Kircher as robotics STEM advisor for the 2019-20 school year at a stipend amount of $4,500. May I have a second, please? Okay, second that. I think I heard Ed. Not Pete. Not, Peter. not that one. <laughs> Pete, Pete, me too. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> Any comments? I'm glad to see that we're moving, continuing moving forward with our plans with robotics. All in favor? Indicate aye. by aye. 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 Thank you. Action items, educational, middle school, summer school. Steve? Dissolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent <coughs> and the Board of Education hereby authorize <coughs> summer school program, distance learning model of instruction, grades seven and eight, math and ELA, and appointments, appoints the following persons to fill the necessary positions. Program will be held Monday through Thursday, June 29th through August 7th, 2020. Compensation will be as per the teacher's contract for instructional positions. For ELA grade seven and eight, Andrea De Georgia and for the entire session. Math grade seven and eight, Nicole Pomaro and for the entire session. And as principal, Elizabeth Hine for the entire session. Thank you, Steve. May I have a second, please? I'll second that. Thank you, Ed. Any comments? I think it's always important. We do offer summer school. We have done so for my entire time on the board that our students be given that opportunity uh, where there may be, uh, so we don't have them fall behind. Uh, all those in favor, please indicate aye. 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 Thank you, vote carried. Uh, Ed B, Committee on Special Education. I'm sorry, who did you ask, Bob? Ed, please, would oh, you mind sure. doing that? Thank committee, you. Uh, committee on Special Education, resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education has no objections to the following special education recommendations and approves the authorization of, for the funds to implement the special education programs and services consistent with such for the meetings in the middle school dated January 23rd, 2020, February 4th, 2020, February 13th, 2020, February 25th, 2020, March 3rd, 2020, and March 9th, 2020, for the high school dated February 4th, 2020, and out of district for the meetings dated April 1st, 2020, April 2nd, 2020, and April 3rd, 2020. Thank you, Ed. May I have a second? I second that. Thank you, Pete. 
All in favor indicate aye. 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 Rob, would you please do uh, action items A, MOA Teachers Association. MOA Teachers Association resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby approves the memorandum of agreement with the Mount Sinai Teachers Association dated June 16, 2020. May I have a second, please? A second. Thank you, Lisa. As a quick comment to explain, as you may recall from a couple of years ago, it is very difficult to recruit, interview, and secure technology teachers. We have successfully uh, encouraged Mitch Woolman to teach his classes uh, until such time as we can find a new uh, teacher. It will be through June 16th, 2020. Uh, this is a very difficult time to be conducting interviews and seeking replacements, given, given the limited number of students studying that. Uh, I think Gordon could add in the difficulties we had a few years ago in finding a, a technology teacher. Right, I agree, Bob. I think the only institution now that has technology is Oswego, and they generally um, graduate one or two. Per year. It took us over a year to find uh, Lucas Kutcher um, and he had a job. We talked to him into coming back home to the island uh, to take that job. But meanwhile, we had to pay another retired teacher, Pete Shapiro, to fill in. So until such time, we can again spend time recruiting and find somebody, perhaps meet them face to face. Um, we'll have Mitch, an experienced teacher in the classroom. That's correct. Uh, any other comments? All in favor? Indicate by aye. 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 Pete, would you take B, destruction of the 2019-2020 cast ballots? Destruction of the 2019-20 cast ballots resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education. Here I approve the following motion. Whereas on May 21st, 2019, the Mount Sinai School District conducted the August budget vote and election, and whereas the district is currently in possession of all, of all ballots resulting from each annual budget vote and election, and whereas the record retention and due disposition schedule ED1 provides for the destruction of such ballots after one year from the date of the annual budget vote and elections, whereas all at least one year has lapsed from the date of the annual budget vote an election held on may 21st 2019 and no proceeding here have commenced with regard to said election budget vote now therefore be it resolved that the board of education of the mount sinai school district hereby orders the destruction of all cast ballots and unused ballots resulting from the may 21st 2019 annual budget vote and election thank you pete second that yeah. thank you steve all in favor indicate aye Aye. 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 Anne Marie Eblar, pay, uh, terminal payments. Eblar, terminal payments resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent. The Board of Education hereby approves a maximum of $500,000 um, appropriation to be expanded from the EBALR fund to satisfy terminal payments to retired district employees. May I have a second? I second. I'll second that. Pete, any comments? All in favor, indicate aye. 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 EBLR stands for Employee Benefits Accrued Liability Reserve, if anyone is interested. Uh, D. Uh, Steve. EBLR compensated absences resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent. The Board of Education hereby approves the following motion. Whereas the district has determined that they have contractual obligations to pay for the value of compensated absences to certain employees separating from the district <clears throat> in accordance with the current agreements and memoranda. And the district has also determined that it would be fiscally responsible to fund the, for those obligations in accordance with the Employee Benefit Accrued Liability Reserve, EBLR, as authorized in the General Municipal Law, Section 6-P, 
Board of Education hereby authorizes the district to fund the EVLAR in amount not to exceed $500,000. Thank you, Steve. May I have a second? Second. Is that you, Anne Marie? Yes. And thank you, Anne Marie. Any comments? All in favor, indicate aye. 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 And Ed, uh, NICER's reserve contribution, please. NICER's reserve contribution resolved upon the record. Recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby authorizes the amount to be funded in the Retirement Services a Retirement Reserve Fund for the 2020-21 school year shall not exceed 500000 Thank you, Wid. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Rob. Any comments? All in favor, indicate aye. 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 And F, regular board meetings for... Uh, Next year, Rob? Regular board meeting dates. Resolved on the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby designates the following dates as regular meetings of the Board of Education for the 2020-21 school year. August 26, 2020, September 16, 2020, October 21, 2020, November 18, 2020, December 16, 2020, January 20th, 2021, February 10th, 2021, March 17th, 2021, April 21st, 2021, May 11th, 2021, which is a Tuesday, May 8th, 2021, which is also a Tuesday. Thank you, Rob. May I have a second? Second. I think that was Steve. All in favor, indicate by aye. 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 All carried. Maureen, what is the uh, reorg for this year? Is that July 1st? Actually, she's shaking her head, but she's muted. She's muted, yes. We're going to go with July, July 1st. July 1st. She... <laughs> that's the next thing on the agenda, Bob. Turn the page. No, uh, that's, that's the following that's, year. That's the next oh, year. I forgot. Thank you very much. Lisa, would you please do the next one? Sure. Uh, G, 2021-22 reorganization meeting resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby designates Thursday, July 1st, 2021 as the date of the 2021-22 reorganization meeting. May I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Ed. Any comments? That would be next year's. All in favor, indicate aye. 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 Thank you so much. And uh, Pete, lunch, breakfast, and lunch prices. Hi, Pete. Uh, number 11, breakfast, lunch prices. Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby approves the following breakfast, lunch prices for the 2020-21 school year as follows, as listed. Mm -hmm. I have a second? I'll second uh, that. Go ahead. Any comments? All in favor, indicate aye. 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 And district transportation, Anne-Marie. District transportation, resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby extends the regular transportation, occupational education transportation, in district handicap transportation, non-public transportation, special education transportation, field trips and athletic trip contracts through 2020, 2021 school year with first student at a maximum, oh, sorry, at a maximum May 2020 consumer price index for all urban consumers, New York, Northeast and New Jersey area. Thank you, may I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Lisa. Any comments? All in favor indicate aye. 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 Thank you. Jay, lunch contract, back up to Steve. Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby extends the contract for school lunch with Whitson's School Nutrition Corp for the 2020-2021 school year at an increase of the May 2020 consumer price index for all urban consumers, New York, Northeastern, New Jersey area. May I have a second? I'll second, second. that. Thank you, Ed. I'll just offer a comment that each year, uh, both as a either uh, scheduled visit or a unscheduled visit, I go to 
the students' lunches. Uh, I visit with the students. I visit in the uh, cafeteria during the lunch. I observe the lunch line. I observe what's being served. I, I do it unsupervised, uh, unsupervised and unannounced because I found the first year I did it a number of years ago, they pulled their employees from one building to go to another so that it would be very smooth. Uh, and I went out the back of the high school and walked along the fields and went to the elementary school. This is when you could open the doors uh, as needed. And uh, this was, uh, I've always found that the, the offerings, the staff serving the students are just lovely, the, particularly the staff. I do find, and I will rank them, that the best food uh, appears to be at the middle school. Uh, I don't know why that is, but it has always been the best food. Uh, the cookies do get smaller at the high school. That was a big complaint a number of years ago, and I brought cookies up from the, uh, brought cookies from the elementary school to high school. I mean, the high school cookies get smaller. I don't know how it is, how they work. Uh, but I think we have a good, a good service uh, they tend to our students, they know our students. Um, they have been very helpful during this period of time that uh, we've been providing the uh, free breakfast and lunch. And I'd like to thank them for that. So without further comment, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, Ed, election inspectors. Election inspectors resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby appoints ex post facto the following persons to act as inspectors of election for the budget vote board, uh, board election being held by absentee ballot on Tuesday, June 9th, 2020 at the rate of $15 per hour. Jackie Cummings, Emma Tyrell, Bright, Rebecca Siegenberg, and Lee Little. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Rob. All in, any comments? All in favor? Thank you for their help and service. All Aye. in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Steve, uh, do you have okay. some questions? Yes, we have, a, we have a bunch in our chat. The first one, like I said, was a question about graduation, which you, I think, addressed. The next one we have um, is from uh, one of the candidates. Uh, indicating many community members expressed concerns over the distance learning plan that was utilized since the closure of school in March. While we are grateful for what the teachers have done and fully understand these are unprecedented times, school districts are prepared for this community would like to know the direction the district is taking moving forward. There are many questions that need to be considered in the event that we will need to implement again in the near future. Uh, first and foremost, is the district planning to send a survey home to parents asking feedback on distance learning? Is it Distance planning on providing one to one is the district planning on providing one to one technology for K 12? Uh, is there a plan in place for having a task force of sorts related to district learning where stakeholders are represented? I'll stop with that. There's more. So I'll let you do those first and then we'll go to the rest. Well, we'll go to the rest after that. Most of that I'm going to turn over to Gordon because uh, it's in his uh, wheelhouse to address. Uh, if Gordon, if you would please. Absolutely. Last week, uh, I met with the union uh, to see what their expectations were for improvement. I expressed mine. Then I wanted them to meet with the uh, principals. And since we've formed a distance learning team and the buildings are conducting these meetings first with their group of people uh, and union reps, and what we're trying to do is a goal. Number one, we are going to use Google Classroom for the instructional piece and leave it optional right now at this point. It's not firm about the personal visits from teachers to the students, whether it's gonna be through a Google app, Zoom, FaceTime, but we're determining how much personal time with the student the teacher will be making per week, how much instructional time per week using a common platform. Uh, we already put up on the web, the Google uh, Classroom PowerPoint for our parents. We plan on running uh, professional development for parents over the summer. We already have five uh, training sessions with our teachers for beginning Google Classroom 
and advanced Google Classroom and other communication methods with our teachers. Those dates are being set. So I met last week, we met yesterday. Um, principals are meeting with their building teams. I'm gonna get back to the union again to get specific hours and times spent through instruction and then with personal time with students. So it's already underway. Um, and the reason is this, it kind of overlaps with the reopening plans. We have three that we have to do basically in our minds. One, should we not open in September, which is a possibility, as frightening as that is. So rather than being caught off guards, we need to be prepared, proactive, and get this together now where all of our expectations are clear to the students, clear to the parents what's going to happen, and uh, teachers will know what we expect of them on a weekly basis, and there should be no surprises. And it's an agreement with the union. So all of that's in progress, should be ironed out in the next few weeks, and then the training will happen. Tara Davidson's training the teachers. Our new director of humanities will be training parents in their sessions. And she put the uh, parents guide PowerPoint online at this point. And I agree, you know, we, we did know we needed an update, particularly some were used to online instruction and some were not. Everyone has to be proficient in it as we approach the next school year. Uh, and the union does agree with that at this point, but we didn't specifically agree on hours. Second, the need for this is we could open if COVID hits again, which will we be closing? And rather than being surprised, we should be ready for it and have our policies in place regarding online instruction. That's it. Thank you, Gordon. Um, just to add to that, there will be uh, I believe next week, the administrators and those involved in this process, uh, Gordon will be inviting uh, myself and Anne Marie, uh, as well as representatives from each of the school based organizations uh, to a stakeholders meeting to once they have a basic framework to have conversation, uh, bring forth some issues uh, ranging from K through 12 that different parents had through this, uh, those representatives, uh, and that will be a productive meeting with regards to this. Uh, previously, uh, the question was asked uh, about one-to-one uh, -one, uh, computers. The district is, uh, is, has a technology plan that is focused presently on the elementary school. Uh, Ken had addressed that a couple of meetings ago. Uh, where there was need, uh, anyone who needed a uh, laptop or a uh, iPad was given one. Uh, we didn't have any real issue with that uh, going forward. Steve, okay, next question, please. On, continuing on with that, Gordon pretty much answered the next part of Karen's question. Uh, we then right, have, well, we'll, um, will there be specific measure used for assessments, grading, report cards that will be consistent across the grading levels and appropriate for each level of school? And again, this is I, this obviously in a distance learning model. Well, I think, Gordon, I think you had addressed that uh, previously. We had uh, not a, it was a building-based or grade-based grading process and not a K through 12 grading process. Is that no, correct? The, uh, the elementary did uh, pass fail for the end of the year and uh, <laughs> secondary for many reasons, especially in the high school, we went with a numerical uh, system. But I think what Karen might be referring to is, if we have the online instruction, what type of assessments are we going to have uh, at the end of that year or at the end of a quarter? Should we be closed down? That's in that discussion. And as Bob mentioned, building committees are meeting. Next week, I call that the district committee, where all these concerns will come up. I'm very aware of uh, what my parent emails were about this year. Uh, Karen and I exchanged a few. And one sticks out in my mind from a parent who has three children, one in each school. Uh, and if learning occurred, if the teachers were teaching the same time, they had one device, or we had other parents who used a computer in the house for their business, uh, what do the other three students do? So we're aware of all that, all that's being discussed now. Um, but I'm glad everyone's in agreement the district, we're moving to one common system. And now we have to do, uh, refine everything with our expectations and what they are and assessments included in that. 
I think it's also, Gordon, important to point out two other issues. At the secondary level, particularly the high school, um, grades mattered. Uh, the assessments mattered. <clears throat> our seniors, our juniors, uh, particularly the juniors, sophomores, and freshmen, uh, their work continued, and it was important that they had credible assessments going forward. Uh, I have to commend our teachers, uh, our uh, district's union partner, who uh, on a effectively a day's notice was available and had his teachers all ready and working, putting plans together. And granted, over a three month period of time, they improved. We did not, like most districts, have a two week uh, hiatus where teachers were negotiating uh, memorandums of agreement to determine how they would be paid extra or what their requirements would be extra. Our teachers didn't do that. There was no time frame that there was uh, uh, a lack of uh, teaching going on and that they immediately hit the ground. Was it perfect? No. And it every month there was changes and we learned from this. And I think that's going to bring us forward. Steve, next, uh, one is, next uh, question. Transportation, uh, the district been in contact with the bus company and is there plans for cons uh, transportation considering the social distance? That is probably the most significant issue period uh, because, uh, and that will be the most challenging that will have to do with the opening plans and how we open and how that is done overall. Uh, but I don't think presently we have any final decision. We've worked with first student for as long as I've been on the board and before they were called first student uh, and they have been very helpful to us, uh, even during this period of time, uh, in terms of where necessary transport, transport, transporting uh, free lunch and breakfast where it was necessary and things like that. So that is a, a fair question that the district-wide and uh, committees will have to deal with in conjunction with the district transportation first student. Next question, Queen. Uh, next question from Gina. I think Gordon has pretty much addressed it. Was discussing uh, distance learning for the fall, standardized um, consistency, students, things like that. Uh, we have one from Candy. Has the board received a petition from the students that sheds light on the overdue need to increase racial awareness in the Mount Sinai community? I don't believe I have. Uh, I know of it myself. Um, I want to address the, the social awareness issue. This is a place of education, and this is where it starts. Um, take a moment to look at our textbooks. Our textbooks don't address it. Take a look at how our textbooks and even uh, curriculum uh, doesn't really do much. This is a very significant issue that we have to introduce into our local curriculum and into our programs at each of the levels of the school. Uh, I'll give an example of a, of a program I went to just last week, it was a distant learning program. And the speaker started out with, uh, on the screen, a map, a map of the world. And I bet we all have it. It's always the National Geographic map or something like that. And how erroneous the map is and how biased the map is and how all these things contribute to our mindset of our students. And I think, petition or not, uh, we need to introduce this as part of our communities, our communities, social justice discussion on a regular basis. This isn't just a, a statement is issued. This isn't just a, uh, a memorandum or a, a posting is put up. This has to be part of our regular process. So petition or not, I agree with you. We have to get it into the curriculum. It has to be into it and how we culturally change. Next question, please. Uh, I think this one just needs clarification of what you said earlier, Bob. It was, uh, indicates that you spoke about the school campus being closed and not being reopened. Will this mean an alternate venue will be necessary for graduation? I think you just clarified that. That'll resolve that question. No, the, the, the inquiry 
that um, has come to the athletic director has nothing to do with that. This is people who want to run on the track, people who want to use the tennis courts, um, the fields and, and those facilities are closed. Um, that's what, what that statement was about. Um, another one about graduation, and I think, uh, I think graduation, as we know, it's a, it's a moving target. The, the kids are involved. The meeting is happening. So I, I think the information will come out as soon as we have it. I don't, I don't think really it can go much more with that. Uh, there's a Karen, Karen asked about Google Classroom. Uh, her concern is that it isn't necessarily appropriate for K-2 students, uh, and perhaps there's something more appropriate for younger children. Okay, I can bring that to uh, my administrators and investigate that. That's no problem. So and it's a that is all I see. Yeah. All right, thank you, Steve. Okay. I'll take a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Thank you, Ed. Second that. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good night, everyone.